If you're like most Spanish students, then hearing the word subjunctive is enough to strike fear in you. But don't worry. In this video, we're going to demystify exactly what the subjunctive is and when to use it. So put that white flag away, come with us, and you'll be a pro in no time. In this lesson, we are going to teach you how to use the Spanish subjunctive and share some handy tips and tricks to help dispel any confusion around using it. Remember, if your goal is speaking Spanish, make sure to check out baselink.com where you can get access to unlimited one-on-one -on -one Spanish classes with native speaking teachers all via Zoom. So, let's begin by clarifying what the subjunctive actually is. What is the subjunctive? The Spanish subjunctive is not a verbal tense, but a mood. What's the difference between a tense and a mood, you may ask? A tense is used to show an action that is connected to a certain time frame, such as past, present, or future. A mood indicates the speaker's thoughts and intentions behind the action and how they want to frame what they're saying. In Spanish, there are three moods. First, indicative. ¿Te vas mañana? Are you leaving tomorrow? Second, imperative. Vete mañana leave tomorrow. And the last and third one, the subjunctive. Espero que te vayas mañana. I hope you leave tomorrow. For more of the imperative, check out our other video here. The indicative and subjunctive can be confusing, but luckily we have a handy tip to help you. It's all about certainty or the lack of it. When we're certain about something or something is a fact, we use the indicative mood. When we're not sure or something is only a possibility, we use the subjunctive. For example, the indicative is, veo que estás bien. I see that you're well. Whereas the subjunctive is, espero que estés bien. I hope you're well. To put it another way, we use the indicative when something is true. And we use the subjunctive when something isn't a fact but a desire, a probability, or a possibility. Before continuing, let's take a quick look at the four most common scenarios where the subjunctive is used. Number one, expressing desires, orders, recommendations, and requests. For example, mi profesor de inglés sugiere que leamos este nuevo libro, which means my English teacher suggests we should read this new book. Number two, expressing emotions and reactions. For example, me entristece que él no pueda venir, which means it saddens me that he can't come. Number three, expressing negative opinions and doubts. For example, dudo que pueda terminar mi proyecto este fin de semana, which means I doubt that I can finish my project this weekend. And number four, when using time expressions. These are expressions like cuando, when, and in cuanto que, as soon as, that are used to describe actions that haven't happened yet. For example, no voy a ir al nuevo restaurante hasta que vengas a la ciudad, which means I'm not going to the new restaurant until you come to the city. Make sense so far? If it's still a bit fuzzy, don't worry. We're gonna break down the Spanish subjunctive as simply as possible in this video. Before we do that, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more great lessons to help you on your Spanish journey. Done? Good. Let's start by exploring how the Spanish subjunctive is used. How is the Spanish subjunctive used? So we know that the subjunctive is a mood, but how is it used when we apply to different tenses? There are four different tenses of the subjunctive that you need to know, depending on whether you want to talk about the present, past, or future. They are present, imperfect, pluperfect, aka past perfect, and present perfect. Side note, there's also the future subjunctive and the future perfect subjunctive, but these are mostly found in old literature or legal documents that are not used by Spanish speakers on a daily basis, so we can ignore those for now. So with that in mind, let's show you how we'd use the four tenses by using an example, talking to your boss to see how each subjunctive form describes a similar idea with subtle differences. The present subjunctive. No creo que hoy hable con mi jefe. Or, I don't think I'll talk to my boss today. The imperfect subjunctive. Si hablara con mi jefe, las cosas serían mejores. If I talked to my boss, things would be better. The pluperfect subjunctive. Si yo hubiera hablado con mi jefe, 
no tendría este problema. If I had talked to my boss, I would not have this problem. Present perfect subjunctive. Espero que hayas hablado con tu jefe. Or, I hope you've talked to your boss. See the subtle differences so far? Now, we're going to go deeper into each one, looking at when and where to use each form. So buckle up, estudiantes. First up, present subjunctive. The present subjunctive is used for hypothetical situations such as expressing desires, giving orders, or making requests. For example, I want you to come next week. Quiero que vengas la próxima semana. In the above example, I want the person to come, but I do not know if he or she will show up. Here's another example of present subjunctive. When we save more money, we will buy a house. Cuando ahorremos más dinero, compraremos una casa. This example follows the same idea. I'll buy a house when I save money, but um, apparently I need to stop buying lattes and avocado toast in order for that to happen, so. <clears throat> Next, let's take a look at the imperfect subjunctive. The imperfect subjunctive mood is generally used to express courtesy, as well as feelings or situations that are certain. It can be both past and present. If you want to compare it with an English equivalent, it would be similar to how you express conditional if sentences and what is most commonly tied to the what if questions. For example, what would you do if you had superpowers? ¿Qué haría si tuviera superpoderes? You can also use the imperfect subjunctive to talk about situations in different tenses. Past situations. I told her to stop thinking about her ex-boyfriend. Le dije que dejara de pensar en su exnovio. Present situations. I asked my boss to give me my paycheck today. Le pedí a mi jefe que me diera mi pago hoy. Future situations. I told them to come to the party tomorrow. Les dije que vinieran mañana a la fiesta. And finally, when talking about courtesy. I would like to speak with the manager, please. Quisiera hablar con el gerente, por favor. Next, we have the pluperfect subjunctive. This one is used to talk about actions that took place in the past, which were not completed and we regret not having them done. The formula is haber an imperfect subjunctive plus the past participle of the action verb. Let's look at some examples. I would have danced if I had not been so tired. Yo hubiera bailado si no hubiese estado tan cansada. I would have gone to the gym with you but I fell asleep. Yo hubiera ido al gimnasio contigo, pero me quedé dormida. Finally, we're going to look at present perfect. We use present perfect when we talk about something that has started and affects the present or future. Before we do, here's a quick tip. Any Spanish grammar concept that includes the word perfect in it, such as present perfect subjunctive, will require a similar conjugation structure using the auxiliary verb haber. So, in this case, the structure requires you to conjugate haber in present subjunctive plus the past participle of the action verb. Like this tip? Give this video a like tip. Now, back to the present perfect subjunctive. This mood is used when the action we're talking about begins in the past but somehow affects the present or the future. For example, I hope your business trip has been a success. Espero que tu viaje de negocios haya sido un éxito. When you have finished your homework, you can go out and play. Cuando hayas terminado tu tarea, puedes salir a jugar. As you can see, we use present perfect when we talk about something that has started and affects the present or future. If you want a more in-depth explanation about the present subjunctive, we have a full article linked in the description below. That's everything you need to know about subjunctives in Spanish. Let's recap. First off, the subjunctive is a mood that expresses a lack of certainty. Secondly, there are four tenses that we can use. Present, imperfect, pluperfect, and present perfect. Now you know how the subjunctive is used. Why not head to our blog, link in the description below, and test your knowledge with our exercises to practice what you've learned. Of course, if you want to practice the subjunctive with a Spanish teacher today, then why not schedule your first baseline class today? At Baselang.com, you get access to unlimited one-on-one -on -one Spanish classes with native speaking teachers all via Zoom. Try your first week for only $1. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And check out our other video on the imperative mood. That's an order. You'll see why once you click it. <laughs>